Hi, my name is Marlon DeToy, professional wildlife photographer and safari guide. I get asked often, what is the best gear to take on safari with you? What do you use? Why do you take it? And you know, what does it accomplish? If you are lucky enough to have different pieces of equipment or various telephoto lenses, um, then you are fortunate enough to be able to make a decision based on the location you're going to, which is important. If you're gonna go to a place like the Serengeti or, the, or South Africa or Mana Pools, wherever you're going, and you don't have you know, pro gear, I would recommend at least renting one or two pieces of gear. Make the trip worthwhile. You're investing in that trip. It's gonna cost you money, so just invest a little bit more and take quality glass and quality, quality gear along and it's gonna make a difference. What do I take to the Serengeti? Now this is a question I get asked often. The Serengeti, it's beautiful, incredible destination. What is the ideal camera setup for that? Now, there is no one ideal camera setup and for good reason you know we are all different photographers we have different styles we shoot uh, you know various types of stories and th that's the beauty of photography right um, you know it's different for every person what would I take to the Serengeti what do I prefer um, as a wildlife photographer and right here with me I have the gear that I'm taking with me to the Serengeti next week. I'm gonna be in the Southern Serengeti, which is a factor to consider. I'm going to Ndutu. And if you haven't heard of it, it's the place where the great migratory herds, it's a great migration. They go there every year from January, February, March, even April, they go and give birth. Okay, the soils there are incredibly fertile and there's a lot of them, almost uh, one and a half, 1.7 million vulnerabilities that migrate there and give birth. They estimate that about 400,000 babies are born each year, which is incredible. And in turn, they attract a ton of predators, so a lot of lion, cheetah, hyena, even leopard. Um, they all focus on the young wildebeest and it is a sight to see. So for me, every year, a super exciting place to go back to and certainly worthwhile. You wanna take the right gear. So for this trip, why did I decide on the gear I have with me here? Let's talk camera bodies. I always take two camera bodies, um, sometimes a third one. In this case, just two, I feel there will be enough, but I wouldn't recommend taking just one for the reason of if one were to break, you'd have no cameras left. You're in, in a remote location and you can't just chop and change and get a new camera system going. It's very difficult. I've been there, done that, trying to arrange it for clients and it is quite difficult to do. So my suggestion would be to have two camera bodies for in case one breaks, then you have the other as a backup, but also it's convenient. You're in a very dusty location. It gets really dusty in the Serengeti. So having the two camera bodies with you means you don't have to change lenses as often. Having a third one is great. I tend to only go to these places with three lenses, a telephoto, super telephoto, mid-range and a wide, um, and then you have one mounted to each camera. That's perfectly fine. If one breaks, you have a backup and you don't have to change lenses, which means less dust on your sensor. I'm taking with me the Sony Alpha 1. Um, for those who don't know, it is a fantastic camera, um, really good. It's just, uh, for me, an absolute game changer. I've been using it for two years now. I'm gonna do a review on that as well. If you'd like to see soon, um, my two year journey with the Sony A1. And it just works extremely well. You wanna take a camera to the Serengeti that's fast. So you're gonna be doing a ton of action photography. A lot of predator interaction, a lot of hunting, chasing, um, and low light shooting as well. In the Serengeti, um, in the Ndutu region of the Serengeti, you go off road, so you tend to get closer to animals, you can follow animals, um, and you wanna have a camera that can do fast shutter speeds, shoot at relatively low light, because you tend to leave at first light, get back at last light, so you're often shooting in that twilight zone. So having the ability to shoot at high ISOs is great. So for me, Having one of the top end pro cameras, at least one of them is fantastic. I take two with me. Um, I am a Sony Alpha Ambassador, so fortunate that I have these cameras, but they work well. Take a quality camera with you. You're gonna use it. You want speed, you want low light capability, and you want good autofocus. These animals are active, they're fast. Um, eye autofocus has been game changing and certainly will help you along your way um, to getting the shots that you wanna try and uh, achieve. So two camera bodies, essential. Let's get on to the lens. So the first lens that I take, let's talk about the telephoto. On this trip will be my 400 f 2.8. Now, yes, often in the Serengeti, you'll take a longer lens. Uh, typically when I go, I take a 600 f 4. Um, but 
like of recent, I really enjoy shooting wider. I love getting a little bit more of the environment in and making my animal a part of the scene. It's just my style and you know how things are moving towards. And I often feel a little uh, claustrophobic with a 600, just too tight. Um, if I were to go to the Northern Serengeti, okay, uh, Kokatende, Lamai, that kind of region, I'd probably take the 600. Why? Because in Ndutu we can off-road. So we get a little bit closer to our, our animals in Ndutu and the 400 allows me to then capture good content because we're already off-roading, it's, it's allowed, um, so not, not breaking the rules there and we can get a bit closer and get those shots that we're after. So for me, the 400 just works well for that purpose. Um, and then also for me, I'm going afterwards to onwards to some more destinations. I'm going to Kenya, to Solio, I'm going to Samburu, uh, where I th just think the 400 will perform better. But specifically the Serengeti on this trip, my decision is based on the fact that I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be an Ndutu, I can shoot a little bit wider, um, and the 400 is just a great lens. The f2.8 aperture allows me to shoot in low light, um, so I can capture my subjects at their very best in good light um, and make the most of the, the scene and the situation. Now, what if I fall short? You know, what, what do I do? What do you do if you just, you know, you can't get in close enough? Well, I always carry these with me. These are teleconverters, okay? So 1.4 and two times teleconverter. Do not leave home without them. 1.4, you can see on the Sony ones, they're really small. And I love that about the Sony gear is it's small, light, and packable. So do take this with you if you, um, you, know, if you have access to them or rent one, buy them. It's, a, it's an investment that you'll use over and over, especially the 1.4 um, and the two times teleconverter as well. So for those moments where you just feel you're just too far away, you need that little bit of extra reach, I promise you these little guys will come in handy and they're gonna save you cropping and uh, loss of image quality. Ideally, I believe focal length is the winner at the end of the day, I'm not alone in that as well, but if you can achieve the shot with more focal length or moving closer with a vehicle, that's a win for me. So teleconverters allows me to get my 400 f2.8 with a 1.4 560F4 or the um, two times becomes an 800F5.6. The 70 to 200 to me is just, you can't leave home without this lens. This lens has to go with you. It's a fantastic lens. It's just such a good focal range. Um, you often use it. On this trip, we also do the Ngoro Goro Crater, which is just for me, I know a lot of people find it busy and too many cars, wada, wada, wada. For me, no, I love the Crater. It's scenically incredible. Uh, you can see incredible action there, but it's just beautiful. And this lens is an absolute winner for the Crater. Um, the new Sony 70-200 f2.8, um, lens, it's a GM lens and it weighs a kilo, guys. It's nothing. This thing is beautiful to carry around and I love that about the technology of today, just how good these cameras have become, how small and light they are. So 70 to 200, an absolute must for the Serengeti, for the Ngorogoro Crater, for any trip you do. It doesn't matter where you go, that lens has got to be in your bag. Um, then the last lens I take, there's a, there's a variety of wide lenses. Uh, 16 to 35 is a great lens for um, both the Crater and Dutu. 2470 is a great lens. 24105 is a good lens. So any one of those, um, there's not one wide angle lens that specifically works. As long as you take a wide lens, I think it's great. It will help you a lot. Um, and it's one of those lenses where you don't use it every day necessarily. But when you need it, you can be glad that you packed it. Reach in for it, grab it, fire away. Um, but by far the two lenses you're going to use the most is your telephoto, be it a 600 or a 400, a 400 in my case, and the 70 to 200. So I always have my GoPro with me. This is the 11. Um, I use it on this mount. It's a really cool mount. And while I have you, I'll just talk about it. See if the camera will catch it there. There we go. So um, this mount for me, I think it's called the three-way mount but I can extend it so you can turn it into a bit of a, you know, just a, a, not a pole, but it does extend a little bit. So you can see once you loosen it up, you have a longer mount there. Um, so these legs very smartly kick back like this. You can open up this back leg, open up that one. So you have a little tripod system on the go and it's good, you can just turn that up and you're good to go. Always bring that along. You never know when you're gonna need it and it's just nice to have. It doesn't take up a lot of space. Now, you're often gonna get into situations where you're recording sound and audio. 
this mic is a game changer um, from, from Sony stick it on you go no extra cables nothing like that powered by your hot shoe and it just works I take this everywhere and um, I don't use it all the time but when there's a good like lions feeding or elephants or hippos honking and you just want to get a bit of extra audio it's a game changer you got to have it I just bought a drone I don't use it often I know you can't fly it in a lot of the national parks but you know they, I never the aerial experience for me is just so beautiful to get a shot from there maybe of the camp maybe a vehicle in the field at sunset drink stops or do some extra destinations on this where I can fly it so it's just cool to have I just got the new Mavic um, 3 classic and it's small enough it folds up well um, and I keep it in a separate bag stack it in my luggage uh, bag and and I just bring it along. It comes with three batteries, the fly more combo. Uh, it's got about 46 minutes of flight time. So for me, it's a new addition to my arsenal, but I do bring it with um, just in case I need it. Gear for the Serengeti, two or three camera bodies for the reasons that I mentioned earlier. Telephoto lens, in this case for me, Serengeti Ndutu Southern Serengeti, the 400 f2.8. 70 to 200, absolute must. 1635 is what I'll take with in terms of wides. Um, I'm actually busy filming on it now, which is why I haven't shown you. And then two teleconverters. Heaps of effort, extra batteries, a lot of extra memory cards. That's my gear setup. Hope that makes sense. Let me know in the comments what your favorite gear setup is for the Serengeti and why. I'd love to hear from you. And then also subscribe. I'd love to see you guys uh, on the channel more. A lot of this content coming this year and excited to share more of my experience, thoughts, and knowledge with all of you. For now, thank you for watching. Subscribe, share this video. I'd appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Um, and uh, I'll share a update from the Serengeti uh, with you guys uh, in a couple of weeks, one time back home. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.